And we're live. Good morning, everybody. Sean Elvis here. Back with another beautiful sermon today. All for the glory of the Lord, of course. Let's, uh, let's begin today with uh, our Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn book. We're going to sing number 44. We will work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes, number 44. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I actually played this song on the piano, <laughs> I think last year. Great song, one of my favorite songs. I don't know if I've uh, put it in any of my videos yet, but here we go. We'll work till Jesus comes. Number 44. <clears> o <throat> oh, land of rest for thee, I sigh, when will the moment come? When I shall lay my armor by and dwell in peace at home. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. To Jesus Christ I fled for rest, he bade me cease to roam, and lean for succor on his breast till he conduct me home. We'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. I saw that once my Savior sighed, no more my steps shall roam. With him I'll brave death's chilling tide and reach my heavenly home. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes comes and we'll be gathered home. Amen. Amen. I love working for Jesus. He's my boss today and I'm doing his work here on this video. So without further ado, if you want to open up your King James Bible to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, we're going to start in the Old Testament like I usually do. Chapter number eight, Jeremiah chapter eight. I'm just going to read a few short verses to get us going here on this message today, if you want to follow along. God bless you. Good morning. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 8, starting in verse number 4. The Bible says, Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backslide? They hold fast deceit, and they refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Every one turned to his course as the horse rushes into battle. Yea, the stork in the heavens knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. Word of the Lord. Greetings, brothers, my sisters, my friends, my colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Back with another glorious video here for you guys today. Um, one of the most annoying things that uh, you can do in this life is work very, very hard to achieve something, right? Only later on to find out that it was all for nothing. You know, you, you, you worked, you did something the wrong way, right? You, you, you worked so hard, you put in all that effort and it was all wasted for nothing. I mean, it's like, it's like if you went to your work, uh, your, you know, your, your employment, your place of employment, you went to your job and the boss comes in later after you finished all your work and he examines your work and says, sorry, <laughs> you, you did it wrong. You got to redo it. How annoying, right? It's nothing more annoying. I've been there. I've been there. It sucks. Well, the Lord told the prophet Jeremiah here to preach a message to the Israelites. Uh, part of that message was 
in uh, verse number seven, he says, my people know not the judgment of the Lord. The people were not doing the right thing. They weren't following uh, God's commandments. So friends, my message today is called, what are, what are we working for? You know, just like the old saying goes, right? We want to work smarter, not necessarily harder, right? That's the way to go. You know, so we're going to look at a few Bible verses today and uh, kind of get an idea of how God wants us to work. You know, what God wants us to work for so that we can work smarter, not harder. Um, you know, uh, when I'm talking about working, you know, it's, it's, it's usually always, if I mean, most of the time, if not always, right, it's always better to know exactly what you're going to do before you start doing it. You know, because... Even if you just work a little bit and you do the right thing, you could at least chip away and, and get more work done, right, eventually. Then um, if you have no clue what you're doing and you just set out and do it and you do it all wrong, <laughs> you know, I'm reminded of like, uh, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but uh, you know, you, like you buy those like furniture at Ikea and, and you think, I don't need the instructions, I, I know how to do this, and then you do it and then you... Get halfway, you halfway build the thing and you realize, oh, I forgot to put in like this drawer or something and you got to tear it all apart and do it all over again, right? It sucks. But anyway, my question is, and I want you to ask yourself, what are you working for? You know, what is it that you're working for? You know, are you working to have a bigger house, uh, more money in your, in your bank account? Are you working for a new phone? Maybe you just want to see what, uh, you, may, you want to just have what other people have, you know, because the truth is there's a lot of people in this world that they have a lot of nice things. You know, some people are rich. They have a lot of wealth. They have a lot of money. You know, they have businesses. They have property, material things like real estate, jewelry, all kinds of nice stuff. You know, boats, cars, planes, trains, you know, you name it, right? And, you know, but the thing is, riches aren't always about money, okay? See if I could pick up. All right, we're live again. I don't know if it's going to fall off. My connection's not very good. Anyway, here we go. Are we still going? All right, we're going. All right, I'll piece this together later. Anyway, uh, I was talking about riches, right? And, and, uh... You know how some people have a lot of money and some but you know i was also talking about you know how they have boats and cars and all this stuff but riches aren't always about money right uh some people are rich in health or or good looks or beauty or attractiveness uh athleticism if you want to think of things like that like you could be very rich in in youth and health and and things like that but or you could just be rich in, in your social circle, right? You could have tons of friends. You could be famous. You could be popular. Everybody knows you. Um, you have a you have a huge network of people that uh, that support you and, and be be there for you. There's different ways to be rich, right? It's not just always about money. And um, but I but I do want to start off by saying, you know, I'm not here to condemn you. If you're rich in some area of your life, you know, God bless you. That's great. I'm 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 happy for you, right? I. I couldn't be happier, especially for my friends, too, my rich friends. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, I'm also not here to praise the rich people either. You know, if, if you're if you're rich, I'm not going to treat you any different than I would treat somebody who's not rich. You know, the Bible teaches us to um, not be a respecter of persons. That means treat everybody equally the same, right? Jesus, Jesus taught us to love one another, not only love the rich people, right? Um, but, you know, remember our question for the day is, what are we working for, right? Are, uh, are we working to get rich? Maybe you're already rich in some area of your life. Maybe you're working to stay rich or get richer. Um, or maybe you're poor and you've just given up and you've said, ah, I'm done working. I can't do it. I'm never going to be rich. Um, so I, I, I'm not going to try anymore. Friends, wherever you're at in your life, I'm not here to judge you. We're just here to see what God has to say about working. And because, you know, the thing about being rich is, you know, some people have to work very, very hard to be rich. Um, but also other people don't. They don't have to lift a finger. Uh, they were just born rich in some area of their life. Maybe they inherited something or they were just naturally 
good looking, whatever the case is, a lot of people get rich in different ways. And it's not always necessarily through hard work. But here's the thing, no matter how rich you are, your riches can only go so far. You can only uh, get so much riches. Um, and you know, they will bring you temporary joy, I, I, uh, but it won't bring you a lifetime of happiness. You know, riches never make people happy. How many rich people have you heard of committing suicide or drug overdosing? You know, a lot of times, how's the saying go? More, more money, more problems, right? Sometimes riches can just bring you more problems and uh, they don't bring you true peace of mind and peace in your heart and soul. And, and, and riches cannot buy you a good relationship with God, most importantly, right? Riches cannot save anybody's soul. Nobody can buy their way into heaven. Nobody's going to get into heaven based on how good looking they are <laughs> or because they're popular, you know? So the thing is, Friends, what are you working for? What are we working for? Because we can't work our way to heaven, right? We already know that. Doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are, how much you have, how little you have. The Lord's judgment. What's right is always going to be right. And what's wrong is always going to be wrong. Doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. The Bible says, thou shalt not steal, right? That's, that's always going to be true. No matter how rich or how poor you are, you know, some people think, oh, well, I could bend the rules. You know, it's not really stealing. I'm just tax evading or <laughs> that's maybe a bad example. But, you know, um, a lot of people think that they could break God's rules because they're rich or, or maybe because, oh, well, if, if I just bend this rule a little bit, I'll get rich. Right. I, can, I have a way to profit off this. So I, I could just bend the rules just a little bit, get a little rich. You don't have to turn here, but I'm going to focus in on a, a wise saying in Proverbs. If you want to turn to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 2 says, Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. Treasures of wickedness profiteth nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. Friends, the Bible says if we can work for all the treasure in the world, we can get famous, we can get rich, we can get popular, whatever. But if we do so through wickedness, if the way that we achieve our richness is we break God's commandments, we bend the rules a little bit, the Bible says we have nothing to profit. You, yeah, you might profit things of this world. Just like, but, but I remind you of Jesus' famous words in uh, Mark chapter 8. He said, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the world but lose his own soul? Jesus said, Look, man, you, you could have all the riches in the whole world. I think of uh, King, Saul, King Saul. Rich. Good looking, famous, had everything, right? Richest man probably to ever existed, at least one of them. And he wasn't happy, right? He said that this, I don't, if I don't have a relationship with God, all these riches mean nothing to me, right? What shall it profit me if I gain the world but lose my own soul? You know, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to lose my soul. The soul. It's the most important thing, the most valuable thing that any one of us have, right? Riches, material things of this world, they'll pass away one day, right? Eventually they'll perish. No matter what you have, no matter what riches you have, it has an expiration date, right? That means someday it's going to be gone, you know? Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter number 6. You know, and friends, I don't want you to get twisted. I'm not telling you to not work for nice things. Nice things are nice to have. You know, I have a nice shirt here. I got a nice uh, studio here to got some nice cameras to make a nice recording. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me with all these nice things. But that's not what our focus of what our work should be for. Okay. 
and and my message is not to not have nice things it's it's not bad to to have nice things of course we could have nice things and we should have a healthy body and all and stuff like this but whatever it is you're working for maybe we can agree on this that we all want to be successful right we all want to have a prosperous life right in some way shape or form however you define success right but um, how do you define success, right? Is it based on how rich you are? You know, of course, you know, at, at, at the end of our life, when we stand before the Lord one day, are we going to stand before the Lord proud of what we achieved in our life? Friends, my point is, we all come into this world with nothing, right? When we're born, we have nothing. And when, and when we leave and we die one day, we're not going to have nothing either. So, um, but what, uh, there's something that we can do, you know. There's a treasure that we can possess that will last forever, but it's not of this world. You know, a spiritual treasure. A treasure that you can't see it. You can't taste it. You can't touch it. You can't hear it. But it can be yours. It can be ours forever, you know. And that's the treasure that I want to work for. That's the treasure that God wants us to work for. Because when it's all said and done, and one day... When I'm dead and I'm gone and I, I want to be able to stand before the Lord with some kind of treasure that will last for all eternity in heaven. So let's look at this passage in Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to start in verse 19 and just read a few verses. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 19, he says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. And wherein thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is. There will your heart be. Also. Wise words. Thank you Jesus. Amen. You know look when I get up in the morning. That's when I have the most energy. That's why I like to make these videos first thing in the morning, right? I have the most energy and I like to prioritize things first that, you know, are most important to me, you know? And, and let me say this, you know, our life is also like one big long day or, or race, if I can use that analogy. You know, have you, have you ever run a long race? You know, you always have the most energy when you start the race, right? And then as you run along, you know, it gets harder and harder because you run out of energy. So you try to pace yourself so you could have energy to finish. You know, you don't want to burn yourself out. But also at the same time, you need to keep running the race to finish, right? You can't stop and take a break, you know. Um, too many people, myself included, right? We don't even start the race until we'll, until we're older in our life, you know, until, until the race is halfway over and then we say, oh, I, I guess I better get guess I better get moving right and you know so this message is part of my message is to my younger friends you know start running now for the Lord start working for the Lord right now because um, you don't want to wait until you're older and you don't have as much energy as you do when you're young to uh, get that race going and to uh, work on 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 uh, getting that heavenly spiritual treasure that lasts forever where uh, moth and rust doth not corrupt you know, serve the Lord now. You know, start working for those heavenly treasures because none of us know how much time we have, right? You know, I, I'm fairly young by modern standards. But throughout all history, you know, men my age, I'd be considered old by now, right? A lot of guys didn't even live to be my age. And, uh, I mean, look at Jesus. I'm older than Jesus was when, when he was alive or, you know, when he died on this earth. I'm actually lived more than him at this point in my life. And, you know, I have accomplished nothing compared to Jesus, of course, because he started right, right right out of the bat, just working for the Lord constantly every day for me. You know, I, I haven't worked as much. But anyway, you know, if you're older than me, hey, you know, you're still here, right? You still have time. You're still in the race. Think of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul probably the greatest apostle of all you know he, he was an old man when he started working for the Lord and God used him greatly towards the end of his life like I said probably one of the greatest uh, apostles 
laid up all kinds of treasures for himself. Started many churches, wrote most of the New Testament in the Bible. I mean, he, he said, I have finished the race. I fought the good fight. So, you know, no matter how young you are, how old you are, serve the Lord. You know, we need to work and serve the Lord. You know, even, even uh, I mean, the Apostle Paul got himself arrested. Didn't matter what it took. He was going to serve the Lord, right? He he put himself in danger. He was shipwrecked towards the end of his, or, you know, towards the end of his days. And, you know, however much time he had left, he said, I'm going to work for the Lord. You know, now, friends, let's get practical here. What are some practical ways that we can work for the Lord, that we can uh, earn these treasures that are in heaven? You know, right now it's tw- it's uh, the year 2021. How do we store up ourselves heavenly treasures? Now, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is charity. The Bible says charity is one of the most important virtues. Um, and, and, you know, I can't think of anything wicked about uh, giving to charity, right? Maybe you don't have a lot of money, though. Say, Sean, I don't have a lot of money. I can't give nothing to charity. Well, you know, maybe you could just be charitable with your time. You know, maybe you could... Uh, Maybe, you you know, you you don't even have to talk to people. I'm not very social, Sean. Well, you know, maybe you could just pray for people, right? Write their name down. Pray for them every day, right? Be charitable with your time. That doesn't cost you any money. You don't even have to go out and talk to people. (laughs) I mean, very basic stuff, right? But, you know, God hears those prayers. And God can work miracles in your life. and, And so learn how to pray. You know, that's a good way that you can earn treasure in heaven. But what, you know, what else can we do? You know, what did Jesus do, right? What what would Jesus do? What would Jesus work for, you know? Well, Jesus, I know that he read the Bible every day. He read the Bible. He studied the Bible. He knew it backwards and forwards. I mean, of course, that's Jesus. But I mean, hey, we should memorize the Bible too. You know, we should read it every day. I mean, if you leave the house without your phone and you're like, oh, where's my phone? I mean... <sighs> How much more, you know, if you didn't read the Bible that day, you, you should you should feel like stressed out if you didn't read your Bible today. You should, oh, I didn't read my Bible. You know, a lot of people, they don't, they don't have their phone for like five minutes. They freak out, right? But if you haven't read your Bible for like five days, like, are you freaking out? I mean, come on. So what did Jesus do? He read the Bible, right? All that to just say, you know, it's it's been said that the Bible, the word... Bible could be an acronym, stands for basic instruction before leaving earth. So Jesus knew the Bible. So if we're going to store up treasures in heaven, we need to know the instructions on what we need to do to earn those treasures, right? We need to know the rules and study our Bible. You know, I also want to say this. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. And, you know, I'm happy you're here listening to this message. And you can listen to other preachers too, teach you about the Bible and share what the Bible says. That's all good, but the Bible says you need to study to show thyself approved. That means you need to read the Bible for yourself, know what it says. You know, and if you have to ask other people and get an idea, hey, do that too. But you definitely need to read this book for yourself and study to show thyself approved. Um, because, you know, remember the opening verse we read in Jeremiah? He's, God said the people didn't even know what the Bible said. <laughs> I mean, let alone following it. He said, uh, my people know not the judgment, or I forgot the exact quote, but they didn't know what the Bible said, you know, and, and that's what made God angry. He's like, you guys don't even know what I said. So, <laughs> um, but you know, my favorite way to earn treasure in heaven is I love to take my Bible and I love to go fishing with it. You know, I love to go fishing, being a fisherman of souls. It's called uh, soul winning. You know, there's there's nothing more valuable than a person's soul, right? You know, so how can I store up treasure in heaven? I can win souls to the Lord, right? That's the most precious thing in the world, the human soul. And, you know, friends, I'm talking about the Great Commission. You know, Jesus, before he ascended back into heaven and uh, where he sits at the right hand of the Father right now, he told us, and I'm going to turn there real quick, in Matthew chapter 28. I love just reading this verse. Matthew chapter 28, uh, it's called the Great Commission. Just before he, uh, where is my Matthew chapter 28? Oh, there's verse 19. Jesus says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even into the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Jesus told us, hey, go out there and do what I taught you to do. Right? Win other souls to Christ. Win other souls for all eternity. Now, if you win a soul for all eternity, now that person can store up treasures for themselves in heaven for all eternity. Now you both can enjoy that treasure for all eternity. Now that, I don't know but I don't know about what you, what you guys think, but no trophy in this world can compare to me winning a soul for all eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ. That, that to me, that's what I want to be working for. And that's what I'll be doing a little later today, of course. Um, but, you know, what shall it profit me? You know, what riches of this world can offer me if I lose my own soul? If, if my friends, if my family, if my neighbors die and go to hell, you know, I don't care how big my, my mansion is or how nice my car is. I don't really care. You know, I want to see souls in heaven one day. You know, um, the Bible says, whosoever winneth souls is wise. That should be our priority. Remember we talked about starting the race, doing the doing the priorities first. Your priority should be winning souls. You know, everything we do, we should be thinking to ourselves, you know, how can this help me win souls? Win more souls to Christ. You know, the paycheck that you receive at work. You need to you need to I mean, yeah, you need to pay your bills, of course, but you should be thinking, "Hey, how can I use this money to win more souls for the Lord?" You know, maybe I could give this money to charity. Maybe I could spend this money and and buy some Bibles, you know, to give people some, or some church supplies, you know. Let's say you make a new friend. You meet you meet a new friend, you make a new friend. Great. It's great to have good friends, but instead of thinking, "Hey, how can this friend profit me?" You should think be thinking, "Hey, how can this new friend help me win more souls to Christ?" You know, maybe my new friend has friends. Maybe my new friend has friends and family, right, that I can win to Christ. Or maybe if they won't listen to me, I can invite them to church. They'll listen to somebody at the church, you know. Maybe get saved. Maybe that soul will be in heaven one day because I invited him to church. Whatever the case is, you know, make sure when you're young and you're energetic, you're healthy, Use that situation to serve the Lord. Use that situation and ask yourself, how can I use my youth and my health and my and whatever whatever talent or gift or rich you have, how can you use that to win souls? Or maybe you're old, you're broke, you're you're handicapped, you're in jail, whatever, like the Apostle Paul, right? How can you use your situation to win souls? You know, so friends, that's my basic message today. Um, how can we work for the Lord so we can store up treasures in heaven? You know, that's what we really should be working for is uh, st- store, storing up um, heavenly treasures, living a righteous life. You know, I know we all got bills to pay. We have to eat. We have to sleep. We have doctor's appointments and politics and all kinds of social events and things going around. But let's not use these things to distract us. We should use these things as opportunities to win treasure in heaven, to store up for ourselves treasure in heaven and, and win souls to Christ, you know, because we all have a gift We all have an influence. Not everybody's going to be the same. But but no matter who you are, how rich or how poor, how young, how old, healthy, handicapped, whatever. Man, woman, and child, you you can work and decide to serve the Lord today. Store up for yourselves treasure in heaven that you're going to have forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And it's hard to even comprehend forever and eternity. But that's how long you'll have treasure. Where treasures in this earth, eventually they're, they're going to expire, right? Like I said, we all came into this world with nothing. We're all leaving with nothing. And uh, that's my basic message for the day, guys, is let's get to working for the Lord. You know, uh, last verse I want to share is in Colossians chapter 3, verse number 2. Just a quick verse. The Bible says, set your affection on things above. Not on things of this earth. Or excuse me, not on things on the earth. Set your affection on things above. It's nice to have things on this earth, but our affection should be on things of heavenly things. You know, Jesus said, Matthew chapter 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we have a choice, friends. We serve a God who gave us a choice. 
Now, because we're all saved by grace. We're all going to, to heaven by grace through faith. Amen. You know, we don't, we don't have to work to get to heaven. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But we, we, we have a God who gave us a choice. He said, you know, I, I saved you by grace, but now you have a choice if you want to earn more treasure or not. If you want to really profit something, if you really want to make something out of your life, if you really want to store up treasure in this life, it's eventually going to expire. It's going to get lost. It's going to get stolen. It's going to get coveted after. People are going to want to take it from you. It's going to make your life stressful. Or you can just choose, hey, I want to live the righteous path, Lord. I want to store up treasure for you. That will never get stolen. Nobody has nothing to covet after. Like reading your Bible. Or praying for people. Or going out and using your talents to win souls to the Lord. Friends, if you never work it a day for the Lord, I'll be happy to see you in heaven. You know, you put your faith in Jesus, I'll see you in heaven. Amen. But you know, it'd be really nice if we can get to heaven and have a huge pile of treasure that we can just all enjoy together for all eternity. That would be great. You know, because I want to stand before the Lord. I want you guys to stand before the Lord with our head high one day. And say, Lord, I finished the race. You know, I fought the good fight. And I want the Lord to look back at you and respond and say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Friends, that's my message for the day. Let's, uh, let's work for the right reasons. Let's read our Bibles so that we know what the judgment of the Lord is. And let's continually to read it. So we don't forget it and fall and backslide like the Israelites did back in the day. Because God will come and bring judgment upon us if we do that. But let's follow the Great Commission like Jesus taught us. He said, teach others, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And let's remember Proverbs chapter 10 verse 2. Treasures of wickedness profit us nothing but righteousness, righteousness. Delivers, delivereth from death. Let's live our lives righteously. Because if we live wicked, even if we get rich, it's not going to profit us nothing. All our hard work, all of our struggles will be for nothing. So friends, let's get to work for the Lord. Let's go earn some treasure. Amen. That's my message for the day, guys. I um, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to uh, follow along, my closing reading will be in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, but before then, I'm going to just bow in prayer, and you guys have a blessed day. God bless. Have a good day. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, Lord, you've already done all the hard work for us. You gave us your son, Jesus. You didn't even ask for anything in return, Lord. You just gave it as a free gift. Gave him, excuse me, Lord, as a free gift, and we're so thankful because you're so loving and kind to us and compassionate and you're just amazing, Lord. Lord, help us learn your ways. Help us uh, learn how to work to bring you glory and honor and treasure to your kingdom. Lord, help us use our talents and our lives to do your will, Lord. Your, your word says that your will is that nobody perishes and that Everybody will come to repentance, so Lord, help us repent. Help us help others repent, turn from our wicked ways, and help us keep our eyes focused on the real prize of getting close to you and living a righteous life, Lord. And help us never become distracted with the riches of this world, but to stay faithful and diligent in our duties. Lord, I pray that you send us all your Holy Spirit today and guide us in this dark world and lead us on the righteous path, the holy path, so that we could find the spiritual treasure, Lord, and we can work hard and store that up in heaven and see it when enjoy it one day with, when we're with you. Lord, we thank you for this great opportunity that you gave us to work. Lord, there's nothing I'd rather work for more than to bring you glory. 
You're such an honest and fair God. I know that all my work will not be in vain. You're definitely going to pay every last penny that I work for, Lord. And Lord, I'm not even worthy to work for you. I'm not worthy to preach your message here today, Lord. This is your message, not my message. But I thank you for the honor and the privilege to be able to do this, Lord. Lord, please bless all the people who hear this message, all the souls. And help us uh, get out there and win more souls. Lord, bless us all with uh, wisdom to know what to do and how to work. And exactly how to do it, when to do it, and what to do. In Jesus' name I, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I'm going to close, as always, and give uh, God the last word. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 7 through 10. God bless you guys. Have a good day. Galatians chapter 6. The Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall to the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of the faith. Amen. Amen.